It is a land that defies distinction in a place as old as time. Etched in the age-old layers of deep red rock, there is a line invisible to the naked eye, but clearly drawn in the geology. This is where the high reaches of the Llano Estacado end and the rolling plains begin. It is the no man's land of the Texas Panhandle, a place they call the Cap Rock. A lot of people don't know about Cap Rock Canyon. People are familiar with Palladier Canyon and the Play Texas, and, and those are big, uh, certainly, draws for that area. But uh, this is a unique area. A lot of folks ought to come and see it. As a member of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Danny Swepston spends a lot of time here at Cap Rock Canyon State Park. There's certainly plenty to see here, what with 15,000 acres of rugged country, a lake, and even an old railroad tunnel turned hike and bike trail. But when Danny gazes across this vast expanse, he sees something different than you and I. Danny sees this land the way it used to be more than 100 years ago. Probably this rolling plains area was the heart of the bison population. They numbered into the millions with a range across the country. The high plains of Texas suited the wandering herds and the American bison thrived for centuries. But a crisis came during the mid 1800s when the animals were hunted to near extinction. The species salvation would come in the form of a pioneering cattleman and legend of the panhandle. Charles Goodnight was, uh, of course, he's probably best known for establishment of the uh, Goodnight Loving Trail, which was one of the major uh, cattle trails that brought Texas uh, cattle to northern markets after the Civil War. He captured his first bison in 1878, and when he was manager of the J.A. Ranch east of Amarillo there in Paladier Canyon, there were just a few remnant herds left from the big commercial hunts of the 1870s and 80s, and so he captured, actually started with seven animals and eventually built his herd to about 250. And he eventually, he turned it not only into a preservation project, but he tried to incorporate it as a business part of his ranching. When he uh, left the JAs and moved to his own ranch, uh, he started selling breeding animals. He uh, crossed the bison with domestic cattle, tried to improve them, uh, develop a better uh, a grazing animal that would stand that would withstand the uh, 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 the climate of the Panhandle at that time. Upon Goodnight's death in 1929, his buffalo herd was left to the state. But before they could be moved from their home on the range, the unruly bison escaped and disappeared into the vast canyons of the Panhandle. Here they roamed wild and free, rarely seen again for the next 70 years. They're probably the last herd that was captured off the Southern Plains. And out of the millions of animals that once, ex once existed in Texas and parts of New Mexico and Oklahoma, this is the last herd. And it's also the last herd of uh, wild bison in Texas. They are the descendants of the original Goodnight herd here in their new home in Caprock Canyon State Park. After an extensive capture operation, the bison were gathered together and brought here to be overseen by the state. Now, this isn't some kind of drive-through wildlife park or exhibit at the zoo. It is a herd of wild and woolly buffalo, and this is their turf. We're really not set up, you know, like I said, for people to come through as you would for uh, anticipate in a lot of parks, but we hope eventually to have a viewing area that people can see them from a distance. I think uh, a lot of people see bison, they'll, they'll see them in a zoo or in a corral, you know, and they just kind of stand there. And uh, some of the animals have been in captivity all their lives, so they really don't know anything. But these animals like this, they, no one has ever worked with them before. It has been designated the official bison herd of the state of Texas, an honor that carries responsibility too. 
As leader of the project, it's Danny's job to keep this herd happy and healthy. Doesn't take much because these animals are survivors and the instinct remains strong. These are still wild bison and that's that's one thing we want to preserve. We're we're not going to try to we just by taking them in captivity, we've domesticated them to a point. But we're going to try to maintain that wild behavior in them as much as possible. They are symbols of the American West, proud, majestic creatures who live free on the land. While their ancestors were casualties of history, this herd of bison will forever be protected from harm. The dream of Charles Goodnight lives on in the Caprock Canyons and on the High Plains. For this is the place where the buffalo still roam. This is the last wild bison herd in Texas, and we feel like it's worth preserving for not only ourselves, but future generations.